just like the song that we just sang, that he'd be exalted in every aspect of our lives, individually, but more important, collectively. Right? You heard me say it before. I'll keep saying it. My dad was all about it that's because that's the revelation. It's not about the individual. It's about the corporate. The new wine that everybody wants, the pouring out of the new wine, is only in the cluster. It's all, you're not going to get... You're not going to get a drink out of one grape. You're not going to be satisfied with just one. Even in the aspect of Jesus, and I guess there's, applic there's applications for it. Yes, he was the individual, but he was, he was even more than that. Because that's how we come in. He didn't want to be alone. God didn't want to be alone. That's why he created man in the first place. All right? I was talking to my nephew about... about um, uh, him getting married, you know, and the thing is, is, and I don't want to get on a rabbit trail, but you know what? Marriage is a God thing. It's a God institution. Man didn't set that thing up. God set that up. And it's an honorable thing, whether you're godly or ungodly. God honors that because it was a God institution. How much greater, though, when the godly, when the righteous, honor the things of the kingdom of God and put them to work into their lives, Right? God honors that. But he said, it's not good for man to be alone. So he did what? He gave him a wife, helpmate, right? Someone that they could, the two would become one, that they could be joined together. And then Paul brings it all the way down and he says, you know, I show you a great mystery. It's Christ and his church. I mean, how much, and that's where we struggle a lot of times. That's where the church struggles. They struggle in the aspect that the bride, that the, that the many-membered company, that the gathering, how important it is. We think, oh, yeah, a little fellowship here, a little fellowship here. No, 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 it's far greater than that. We, don't, we can't even comprehend the fellowship that God wants and what he desires and what the whole purpose was all about. That's why when it gets all the way down to the one, we have no idea what one is. And one doesn't mean one here, two over here. No, no, one means one only. That's why it was seek ye one only. Okay? It is. It is. And then every joint supplies. And guess what? One part can't be, even though they might look alike, my legs. Guess what? One does something different than the other one does. But you know what? They walk in unison together. And that's how the whole thing falls. And they always do what the head says. Sanders got a whole thing on the body preaching that, you know, and Paul, that's why Paul brought it down. He said he brought it all the way down to the physical, to the natural. Yes, we live a natural life, but we must be a spiritual people. Spiritual, not in a, I'm not talking about a religious people. I'm talking about a people that would walk in the spirit. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy where? In the natural body? No, in the Holy Ghost. Where's the Holy Ghost? Well, what? Don't you know that you're the temple? It's in a people, right? I can apply it individually. I better apply it individually. But I better be willing to lay it all down for the whole program of God, right? Because there it is. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And guess what? All the rest of the stuff will just, oh, yeah, it won't bother me. It may be all around me, but it isn't going to move me. And that's where the boys were at, right? Come on. How many of us, look, they're going to stay in the fire for a long time. You know why they're going to stay in the fire a long time? Because life is compl comp complicating. It's, the word's hard even to say, right? Can't spit it out. It's complicating, right? Life is, isn't it? Where's, which life is complicated? God's life or our life? Enough said. Don't have to say any more. I don't have to say any more. See, we get it. But, you know, I love what Ronnie said. He used to talk about the process in Sunday school. It is. It's in the process, right? Some people worship the process. Some people hate the process. But in the middle, today's proverb, there's a balance, right? That's why the treasure... My God, come on, here's the balance of it. I, I preach this every week to you guys. Here's, here's the balance of it. Brother Danny, what's our favorite scripture? I don't know if it's yours. It's one of my favorites, right? It's the honor of God to do what? Conceal his word. Oh, himself. Where? Oh, yeah. 
in a matter. In a matter of what? In a matter of this thing, this matter right here, this earthen vessel. That it would do what? Show forth the excellency of who he is. Not of myself, but who he is. Unlimitedness saw fit to set himself in a limited time and space in a death doomed body so he could do what? Express unlimitedness. See, we can't, we can't even get our head around that. Mark my word. The word says it. It'll be done. Well, what happens if it doesn't happen in my life? You just keep walking the walk. Stay focused. Stay the course. Don't get sidetracked. Press towards the mark of the... Oh, he is exalted. The high calling. Shake off the dust and arise. Wake up. Right? Same thing. Arise, wake up, get up. From where? From where you're at to where he is. Well, where is he? Well, he's every place. We already know that. But he's got a far greater destination for all of us. What's that destination? Him. It's, there it is. It's Christ in you. It's Christ in and amongst you all. Because Christ is not one person. Even though they applied it to Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, but the anointing or the anointed is the body. It's many-membered. But they all work in unison with the head. That's a strike, like bowling. Right? Not that I say it. It's because his word declares it. And all God's looking for, I'm telling you, from the beginning, that he could have a man that he could walk in and express his fullness in the earth. That was the whole thing. Well, guess who the man is? The man is Christ Jesus. It's the family. Man, you love your family. Well, some people do. But God loves his family. He's a family man, right? We got all these TV shows. You've heard me say this, right? He's a family man. Father knows best, best right? Father knows best. He does know best. How many kids in here don't think that you know more than your parents? I always did, right? Well, guess what? Kick the can down the road a little bit, and you find out, geez, they weren't as dumb as I thought they were. <laughs> I'm, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me back up. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about just people. Although it could happen to, I guess, good, just good people. I'm talking about God's people. Because God has a way with his wisdom, with his understanding, with his word, how he deposits in a, in a body, in a people, that it can be expressed. Amen? All right. Oh, my God. Sidetrack. All right. So, the reason why they're going to be in the fire for a while, because process. And can I say this? The fire, right? That was a life and death situation. Most of our fire that we call fire, we always look at it on a, here we go, Ron, right? We always look at the fire as negative. Well, why is God a consuming fire? Is that negative then? What does fire do? If it purges, if it purifies, if it burns up, then how can it be bad? It's magic. My brother Dale always says this. Fire's magic. I had a big pile of brush. I cut a tree down. I threw all the brush on it. Magic. It all it disappeared. Well, isn't that what it says in the word? He says he's going to burn up all the what? The wood, the hay, the, the humanity that pulls us down. That's a good thing. My God, I need that in my life. I don't know what y'all want, but I need it in my life. Look, I can preach it. I can declare I can do all these things. But to put it in shoe leather sometimes is a difficult process. Why? Because this thing up here that Ron talks so much about that needs to be transformed, 
How does it need to be transformed? There's only one way it's going to get transformed. It's by the renewing of the mind of the Spirit. What Spirit is that? It's only the Holy Ghost. But where does that come? Is that going to come as an individual? Yeah, but you know what? Most individuals have struggles, so then they need the corporate. But what we do is we like to kick against the corporate because of the fact that we all think we know better than everybody else. But the truth of the matter is God set it up this way where we need the whole family. We really do. All right. Here we go. So I want to talk about, did I, did I get all my points in so far? I forget sometimes. That's my humanity, right? Um, so what I want to talk to you a little bit, um, again, I want to deal with, look, they're in the fire. They're going to stay in the fire. You might as well just get over it, right? Most of you are in the fire. You, some of you realize it. Some of you don't realize it. What are you going to do with your fire? See, I so believe, and I, I'll tell you what, I don't, always, I don't always do it. Sometimes I do do it. Sometimes I can be the, like the consummate overcomer, which is Christ, which lives within me. Oh, my God, that's what we need. And sometimes I go through the fire, through little bits of fire, or little um, whatever it is, and it overcomes me. And sometimes I can overcome the fire. You know where most of the overcoming is happens? Happens in here because the fact that this thing here gets going. If this thing here is out of gear and it starts looking like right there it's true my God help us Lord but you know what that's why God puts us all together so we can do what iron sharpens iron right remember the five stones that David had down in the bag this ain't even where this is none of my notes today I, this is coming off the cuff right but out of the bag out of the bag it didn't matter which one it was but what it was is they stayed in the house Right? It was those that were willing to stay in the house. And guess what? He picked them out of the river because, first of all, they were in the river, right, in the stream, and they got all the, oh, yeah, the quarry, remember? They got, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Got all the rough points knocked out. How many people in here, raise, let's see, raise the hands, how many people that have, wait a minute, how am I going to say this? <laughs> I got a rough point still, right? You know why? There's a lot of me still in me. Look, God does not want to come. I, I, all you got to do is read your Bible. He doesn't, he doesn't come to change your personality. What he comes to change is your nature and your character. First, the nature, right? You got to be put into Christ. Once you've been put in Christ, then the process starts to change your character. What is the character? The character is about how you want to do or live your life. Look, you got, look. Go read your Bible. You think you got it. 21st century Christians. We got a nice building, air conditioning, heat, got a parking lot, got cars to drive, houses, lands, all this stuff. We got more distractions than those boys did, and they were just as, just as distracted as we were, and we got a much better life than they have. And guess what? We didn't have the Romans. We might have the, never mind. But they had the Romans over them, and they weren't a good people. Oh, yeah, remember the boys in the fire? They had the Babylonians. But you've got to remember. Come on, folks. Pastor Tim's not saying this. This is what the Word of God says. How did they get in the hands of all of them things? And who was God dealing with? God was dealing with his people. You might as well get it through your head. It is not the world God is dealing with. The world is dealt with in the midst of when God's people are dealt with. Why do you... Oh, my. There, what do you say, Brother Stephen? His eye is on you. You are the light of the world. Yeah, you didn't say they were the light of the world. And the other reason why they don't know it, because they haven't been brought to the conviction. You used to be just like them. Isn't that what it said? I used to be just like them. Look, we all came out of the same dysfunctional family. And then it's our choice whether we want to keep acting like it. Oh, yeah, remember, he's not trying to change your personality. He's trying to change your nature and then your character. Right? Sister Savani, she said it. God wants people to grow up. I mean, my God, all you, all you families got little, little kids. You want them to grow up. But all you adults that have adult kids, that your kids don't grow up, you're like... 
You can't tell me that it isn't happening because it happens all the time. I work with tons and tons of 30, 40, 50, 60 year old kids, children. You know why? All you got to do is watch the way they act. Like teenagers, worse than teenagers. That's why my dad used to say teenager ain't even in the scripture. That's a man-made, that's a man-made thing. Doctrine, if you can call it that. All right? You never call them teenagers in the Bible. Hmm. All right. But it is. It's, it's a good thing. God wants to grow up. My God, I, I'm glad I finally grew up. And I'm still growing up. Because we are growing up together in him. In the what? Into his fullness. And along the way, guess what? Along the merry way, right? We're going to get what? We're going to knock off some, we're going to have sparks flying. That's cool. Don't you like when sparks fly? See, you like it if the Holy Ghost comes in and sparks fly. But what if the Holy Ghost comes in and he doesn't do it the way that you thought he might come in when sparks fly and then sparks just fly? See, I got you thinking because we always want the shazam. Well, what happens if God just says shazam? I don't belittle none of the miraculous, but I still look around at the miraculous. Not saying that God can't come in. He's done it, he's doing it, and he will continue to do it. You know why? It's his nature. But he's the one that's going to do it. When's he going to do it? He's going to do it when the people desire it. Are you saying we don't desire it? No, I didn't say that at all. You know what I like about Abram? Brother Stephen brought this up in Sunday school. Here I go, this is a rabbit trail, bunny rabbit trail. And you know my brother Dale always says, all bunny rabbit trails lead to Jesus. Right? So here we go. Here's Abram, right? I don't know how many years it was. Some people say 13. I've heard all kinds of different things. When God didn't talk to him, when Abraham, right, Abram, took it into his own hands. But you know one thing that was cool about Abram? He never lost focus. Because when God spoke again, his ear was right there to hear the voice of God. And then what do you do? Oh, yeah, we find out that when his son, his only son, which we know he had two, but God only said he had one. When he was willing to sac him, sacrifice him because he was united to him, right? You heard me preach all this, right? This is good stuff. He was willing to do what God said. God's only asked his people to do one thing. See, people say, oh, God's asked you to do this, 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 this. No, he's only asked you to do one thing. Obey his voice. That's all he ever asked you to do. Is that not? Come on, read your Bible. He only, he only told his people, only asked his people to do one thing. Right? In that, you know, we can say, yeah, he said, love the Lord thy God with all you. You know, you can go through all the list of all the other stuff. But those are all made up of the list out of the one command that he said. He only told them to do one thing. Obey my voice. Right? Oh, yeah. And what happens? What, what, what's the result of, or what causes us not to obey his voice? What causes Brother Tim, Pastor Tim, not to obey God's voice? Unbelief. I'm telling you. And why does unbelief get us like that? Because we start to look at everything that goes on around us. Right? Yeah. What happened to, oh yeah, Brother Ronnie, right? When you did the, um, the corral thing. I can't think of the name. Harness of the Lord, right? What happened to them two horses, right? Because they didn't put on their blinders, right? You can't have blinders. You've got to know what's going on. No. You've got to have blinders on. I didn't say to be ignorant. And you know what? Oh, my God. Never mind. I won't go there. I'll get myself in trouble. All right. I love you. I know what God's doing. How's he going to do it? I don't know yet because I don't know how he's going to do it in my life yet. Oh, yeah, I do know how. The more I submit to him, the more I see it. The more I seek him, the more I find him. The more I knock on the door, the more to be open. The more I draw near to him, the more he'll draw near to me. The more I gather with his people, right? 
with the family, with the fellowship, break the bread. What's the bread? Bread can be, yeah, 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 it can be that, Brother Danny. We know he loves food. I love food too. But the word of God, all right? Yeah. Come on now. God always, the, my, word, my message, remember last week? We had the communion table. We were dealing with Resurrection Sunday. God has a provision for his people. Why? Because he loves his people. He loves us. So, oh, my God. Can you imagine he loves us so much? He loves each and every one of you so much that he is unwilling to leave you in the state that you're in. But Brother Tim, don't you know I've been born again? I've been baptized in his name. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm moving the gifts of the Spirit. God does not want to leave you where you're at. And that's Sister Savani's fault. You were the one that said, I, I, I sense the Lord was saying to do what? To go up, to come up higher. I want you to come up higher. My dad used to say this all the time. He says, if I do my job right, guess what? I'll work myself right out of the job because all the five-fold ministry is going to be on. Until. Well, that until could be a long time. It sure could be. It could be a longer than you around. Probably will be. But then again, nothing is impossible. For those that do what? You know what he told them? All right. My God, where are we at? Got lots of time. Thank you, Jesus. We good? Everybody good? <clears throat> Excuse me. So last week I dealt with the provision of the Lord. And he does provide, provides everything. So I wanted to, I just wanted to read a little bit of, I touched it last week on, I mean, familiar scriptures, right? You know the little story about on the road to Emmaus? Okay, right? This is where, look, look, if we'd all be honest with ourselves, we find ourselves in a lot of the same situations that they were in, if we'd really be honest. Okay? My dad used to say this all the time, right? If we did take an honest look at ourselves when we read the scripture, right? There's no condemnation in it. There's, where, there's, the, there's the lifesaver for those that really have faith. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. You can't condemn yourselves, but you got to be honest with yourselves. You got to get the scale out, the balance of it, and you got to look at your life and see what's directing your heading. I have to do it. You have to do it. We have to do it as the family. What direction are we going? Well, there's only one direction. Press towards the mark of the the what calling? So there's only one direction. It's up. Right? Up from where we're at. All right, so here we go. So if I'm going to put a title on the message today, if they put it on, my mom says, you never title your messages. You know why? Because I'm this kind of a kind of guy. You see me? I go from over there to up here when you're still up there, and it just kind of all flows together. Right? There's no, I, I don't know, I, I probably have to come to a point where I can stop, gather my composure, and start. Kind of tough. Kind of tough. Kind of tough. My brain was going crazy during Sunday school, and then during praise and worship, and I get my notebook out, and I start writing notes. And then I get up here, and sometimes it's a whole different direction. All right? So here we go. So this is what I want to do. So, oh yeah, back to the message. Did not our hearts burn? Where are my buds at? Thank God. Well done. Is that not what he said? Well done. (laughs) 
He did. I didn't say it. He said it. All right, here we go. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24. Or no, not, I'm sorry, Luke 24. All right. I want to continue with the thought that I had last week about the provision of the Lord. And if you think about it, all right, I, I'll, I'll regress, if I can say it like that. They're in the fire, right? You think they had this discussion as they were tying them up, getting ready to throw them in, you think they were having this discussion with one another? Um, gee, this doesn't look good. Um, I don't know if this fire is going to be like the God kind of fire that, what did you say, Brother Bud? They had all the law. They had all the prophets. They already knew all this stuff. They've been told from Yehi. They've had all the witnesses of all the past experiences that were all behind them. They brought it all the way up. And, you know, you get all the way down in where the Romans were in charge back in, Je down there in Jesus' day. You know, he told them, he said, look, you, you, you got the keys to life, but you refuse to let anybody. So here we are. They had all the keys to the kingdom. And I just wondered if they sat and had a discussion. It's just a thought. I don't think they did. But that's just me. Okay. So they were in the fire. So here we go. Let's go to Luke 24 and 12, just as a side thought. You know, I've heard this preached a million times, and I just, I just like this. And this is, this is where a lot of times, this is where we find ourselves. Christ Life Fellowship. Can I say that? Sometimes this is where I find myself. Okay? So here we go. Um, 24 and 12. And then, then Peter, everybody knows the story, right? The girls, were, right? The girls, Mary, all of them, they were all at the tomb. They were there to anoint him. Remember, we preached, we, we shared this all last week, right? We're at the tomb. Then, then they came back, they told what? The boys, right? They told the other boys. There's lots of boys. Right? Peter, right? All of them. So Peter and John, they run to the tomb. Who got there first? Anybody know? Right. John. Right? Got to the tomb first. But Peter, when he got there, what did he do? He got there and he went in. And I've heard, I've heard it preached this. My dad preached it. He probably preached it here at least once or twice. Our knowledge has far surpassed our experience. And what Christ Life Fellowship, if you want my opinion, we're looking for an experience. Yeah. Yeah. You want me to tell you where your experience is at? It's in each and every one of you, and then it's in you. And then you'll see what you think you're looking for. Can I say it like that? So here we go. So then, Peter, then arose Peter, and he ran unto the, unto the sepulcher, all right? And stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes, right? Linen clothes were over here. And what? And he departed, wondered in himself what was happening. But if you go to John, John says, the linen clothes that wrapped his body, they were over here. And the one that wrapped his face was over here. And there was this great gulf of fix between the two. Why do you think that was? Hmm. You want to know what I think? Not that it really matters. But I think it's because the Holy Ghost hadn't been poured out yet. And when the Holy Ghost poured out on the day of Pentecost, the great gulf of fix was brought together. That's just my opinion. All right, so here we go. Uh, verse 24, and uh, i got lots of time. Sweet. And behold, two of them. Let me read this in the, let me, let me change the translation. 
Let me read this in the message, all right? Later that Sunday, two Jesus' disciples were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a journey of about 17 miles. And they were in the midst of a discussion about the events of the last few days when Jesus wa walked up and accompanied them in their journey, okay? Here we go. This is where most of us are. And they were unaware that it was Jesus walking alongside them. For God, for God, for God prevented them from recognizing yeah. him. Okay? Jesus said to them, you seem to be in a deep discussion about something. What are you talking about? So sad and gloomy. They stopped, and the one named uh, Cleopas said, haven't you heard? Uh, are you the only one in Jerusalem unaware of the things that have happened over the last few days? Jesus asked, what things? The things about Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They replied, he was a mighty prophet of God who performed miracles and wonders. His words were powerful, and he had great favor with God and man, right? Or God and the people. But three days ago, the high priests and the rulers and the people sentenced him to death, and they have crucified him. We all hope that he was the one who would redeem Israel. Well, he was. Right? So here we go. Let me do a jump off scripture. All right. Let's go to 1 Peter. I know this is, this is rehashed uh, mashed potatoes, but we know this. All right? It's not grievous for us to hear these things again. You know why? You know what happens when we hear the scriptures over and over again? It stirs us up. Right? Doesn't it? So here we go. Because a lot of times in our natural life, right? Oh, yeah, which is our spiritual life. Because I already told you that the treasure, the Holy Ghost, is in an earthen vessel. Well, where's the earthen vessel? Oh, yeah, it's walking in the earth. Okay, here we go. Just so we know. All right, 1 Peter 1 and 3. Celebrate with praises. Oh, let me read this in a different translation. All right, my verse I want is 18 and 19, but I want to read up a little bit, okay? All right, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, all right, which according to his abundant mercy, right, his provision, has begotten us again unto a what kind of hope? One person knew that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Fran. Unto a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Right? I know there was probably more people that said it than her. All right. To an inheritance where? What is it? Incorruptible. Right? Remember? Remember? Nebuchadnezzar saw them singing, dancing, and praising the Lord in the midst of the fire, and there was no hurt. Some translations say, other translations say, there was no corruption in them. Here we go. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and it fades not away. It's not faded glory. It's not Walmart clothes, okay? Reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power, who are kept by what? What keeps you? Human wisdom, human reasoning. Well, you know, I thought about this, Brother Bud. You said all them isms, right? All them isms that you said last Thursday, you know what, it, you know what, you know what the, the, they all deny? Spiritualism. Yeah. Spiritualism is not religious right. or religion because there is a pure religion. Spiritualism is spiritual. Because God is spirit, and the Holy Ghost, which dwells in his people, is a spirit. So we become spirit beings, or filled with the spirit, so that we might be able to do what now? Walk in the spirit. Okay, so here we go. To an uh, undefiled faith, not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation that is ready to reveal when? In the last times, right? We all know that there's how many salvations? Three, right? You're saved, you're being saved, 
and you yet shall be saved, right? All right. Wherein we greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. Oh, God, do they need be? That you be in heaviness through the manifold temptations, right? That the trial of your, what? You ever ask yourself, why does faith have to be tried? It wouldn't be faith then. The trial of your faith is the process of time. It's not only the process of time, it's the process. It's the things we endure. It's the things we go through. Okay, here we go. Uh, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than what? That does what? What kind of gold is he talking about? Is he talking about gold as in deity gold, or is he talking about gold as in Wall Street gold? Because deity gold does not perish. Wall Street gold, even though they, they like, man, the stuff's been around forever, eventually it's going to perish. Right? How many live in Massachusetts? Oh, yeah, we all do. You ever crawl underneath your car? Look to see if it's perishing? <laughs> because it cost you some gold. Yeah. All right, here we go. That the trial of your faith being much more, your trial, oh my God, my buds are in the fire. But Peter says that the trial of your faith is much more precious than gold. Remember when I started the whole thing out? Nebuchadnezzar went in to Judah, went into the temple. And he took vessels out of the temple. And remember, I related the vessels. I get it. There was probably gold this, gold that, yeah. silver this, brass this, bronze that, all that. But what did I relate the gold to? The precious things of God, his people. And that's exactly what they took out. All right, so here we go. Ah, uh, let's see. And the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with... Why fire? Might be found unto the praise and the honor and the glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Well, when is he going to appear? We already know that. Any minute. The minute you start looking for him, I'll guarantee you, he'll show up. Why? Because he's the ever coming one. He's the consummate overcomer. He's always here. He's omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's all those omni whatever they are. He's always here. You can't get away from him. Even Brother David said, Lord, you know, even if I make my bed in hell, even if I live in the good old United States of America and the coronavirus is going on, where can I go to get away from your presence? All right, here we go. You like this so far? But God has a provision, right? Look around. Look around. Look at the provision. Can you, can you see the provision of God before your eyes? Can you behold the provision? Look, it's, this is the provision. You're part of the provision. All right, here we go. Ah, uh, let's see. Whom having not seen, you love. In whom, have you seen him? In whom, though you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul, right? Of which salvation the prophets, right? Which prophets were them? All the prophets. Having inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify 
when it testified beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it is revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto, unto you with the, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels did desire to look into. All right. Then he goes on to say what? Uh, wherefore, Brother Ron, what are we dealing with? Mine. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your, right? Everybody know what loins are, right? It's the seed of reproduction. Guess what your mind can do if it's not careful? It can reproduce a lot of stuff. All right, gird up the loins of your mind. I remember, I remember the story. I wasn't here, so I don't know. But I remember the story one time. My dad preached this message. Probably Chicopee, maybe? I don't know. He pulled out somebody's girdle and stuck it on his head, right? Did he not do that? I heard the story. I'm sure that was probably pretty funny. Gird up the loins of your mind. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Look, I didn't orchestrate this. Ronnie talked about it today. Stephen talked about it today. I already had this in the works. I struggled all week long what to share today. And I said, I'm going to continue with the provision of the Lord. God has got a provision for his people. All he's looking for is people is willing to say, yes, Lord. All he's looking for is people that are willing to say, yes, Lord. All he's looking for is the people. Are you saying that we're not saying yes, Lord? No, I didn't say that at all. All he's looking for is the people that say, yes, Lord. Well, if you're saying yes, then he's looking for you. And that's pretty good. What happens if you say no? Well, then you get on the prodigal list. Oh, yeah, well, you already have a redeemer, right? He'll redeem you back. He's already purchased you, right? Don't you know? Come on now. This is where we struggle. Anybody, anybody else like me? You ever struggle with this? The, the simplicity of the message. Don't you know you've been bought with a price? You're not your own. Really. But he still allows you to have free will. Right? You, you already heard me tell the whole story about Jesus, right? We all thought he was a special case. All God, all man. But he had to lay down his will. I know people will kick against it and argue over it. They say, oh, he couldn't have said no. He actually could have said no because he said, yeah. not my will. Yeah. So he shows the, the picture of, to you, that he could have denied and said no. But he wasn't going to do it. Oh, yeah, the three boys getting ready to put in the fire. We don't have to defend ourselves. We know what our mommies and daddies put in us. We know what the Holy Ghost deposited in us is. We know all that stuff. We're not going to bow down. And if he saves us, praise the Lord. And if he doesn't save us, praise the Lord. We're going to sing his praises regardless. Whatever it looks like, it doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. He's looking for a people that will exalt him higher and higher. All right, here we go. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought uh, unto you at the, at the revelation of Jesus Christ, all right? As obedient ch children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. When was your, before you came to Christ, you know that, all right? Because it is written, be ye what? Why does God want us to be holy? He already told you, right? Doesn't he tell you? Is it up there? Oh, it ain't up there. Be holy as what? Because he's holy. It's the only reason. No other reason. If God wasn't holy, he wouldn't ask you to be holy. But God wants his people to be just like him. That's why he said, be ye holy as I am holy. Be ye righteous as I am righteous. Right? Okay, here we go. Uh, and if you call on the Father, who with... Without respect a person judges according to every man's work. Past the time of this, what? Of this process of time that we have in this earth, right? Sojourning here in what? Fear. What kind of fears do you want you to have? Fear of the Lord, right? Because what does the fear of the Lord do? That you depart from hell beneath. That's what it says in the Proverbs, all right? Um, for as much as ye know, here we go. This is why I want all that down to this, okay? As you know that you were not redeemed with what? 
corruptible things. Is silver and gold from which, from what? Which your vain conversation received by the traditions of who? Your fathers. Who is he talking to? I heard, who? The believers. He was talking to the church. Okay, just, just, just clarification. All right. But with the what? The precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundations of the world before was manifested in these last times for you. Who by him did believe in God that he raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith, here we go now, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing you have purified your souls in, so how do we purify our souls? By in, by what? Oh yeah, obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, right? Christ is the seed. The seed is uncorruptible. Can't die. Look, if it's in you, guess what? You can't die. Look, if this outer shell goes to sleep, you're not dead because you can't kill the seed. And if the seed be in you, you can't kill the seed because you couldn't kill him. You just got done singing a song. Death couldn't hold him down. Death can't hold you down. Believe thou this. But what's the thing most people fear the most? Oh, yeah, death. That's why the Bible says, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on life. Do all these things. What do you do? You want a job to do? Put them on. Best job in the world. All right. Seeing you purified your soul and, and obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another in a fervent, being born again in corruptible seed. I know I'm going fast, but I'm running out of time. All right but of incorruptible by the word of God, all right, which liveth and abideth forever. Selah. All right. For all what? Flesh. Is as what? And God's got a bigger lawnmower than we have. All right. And all the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass withers, the flower thereof falls away, but the word, but the word, but the word, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which the gospel is preached unto you. Okay? I'll never get over this. All right, here we go. Let's go back to Luke. I'm not going to finish this today. I thought I could, but I can't. All right, so where did I leave them on the road to Emmaus? Where were they at? What verse? Anybody remember? The two of them, they were on the walk, and it came to pass, verse 15, while they communed together, the reasoning, but their eyes, oh yeah, their eyes were holding right, God, right? I, I use that in the, the Passion Translation. So here we go. Give me a second. All right. All right, let's go to verse uh, 2021. But three day, days ago, the high priest, all right, and the, and the rulers, they sentenced him to death and they crucified him. We all had hope that he was what? Oh, yeah, was going to redeem and rescue Israel. That's where we jumped off, went to Peter. He is our redeemer. We know that. We celebrate his, the resurrection life. Early this morning, some of the women informed us 
uh, something amazing. They said that they went to the tomb, found it empty. They claimed the two angels appeared to them and told them that Jesus is alive. Is Jesus alive? Is Jesus alive in you? Is Jesus alive in you? All right. Some of us went to see for ourselves and found the tomb exactly as the women said, but no one has seen him. Jesus said to them, why are you so, we don't like this, thick-headed, right? Why do you find it so hard to believe every word that the prophet spoke, right? Unbelief. They were in, the, they were, they were in unbelief, yeah. right? They believed, right? M me and Brother Bud, we talked about this this morning. Remember when Jesus healed, healed uh, the, the man that came to Jesus said, heal my, you know, about his son, told him to heal his son. And, and, and Jesus said to him, do you believe? And he says, yes, Lord, I do believe. But he said, Lord, help my unbelief. Every single one of us live right there. We all believe he is what he says. The word says what it says. But for some odd reason in me, there is something that still has a little area of a little unbelief. And then what do we do? Oh, yeah, geez, we try to get Abram and try to do it our own selves, right? Well, guess what? If you do it your own self, stay in the position that you can hear God's voice in the midst of it. That's all I can tell you. All right, so here we go. Uh, uh, why do you find it so hard to believe every word that the prophet spoke? And wasn't it necessary for Christ the Messiah to experience all these sufferings and then afterwards to enter into his glory? Isn't that interesting? Then he carefully unveiled to them the revelation, here we go, of himself through the scripture, he started from the beginning and explaining in the writings of Moses and all the prophets, showing how, how they wrote of him and revealed the truth about him. As they approached the village, Jesus, I'm getting to my point here, Jesus walked on ahead telling them he was going on, right? They, Jesus was just going to keep on going, but they begged him to stay, okay? They urged him to remain there. Uh, and they pleaded, stay with us, it's be dark soon. So Jesus went with them into the village, joining them at the, here we go, joining them at the table for supper. He took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, then he gave it to them all at once. Their eyes were open, and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly, in a flash, he was no longer. Stunned, they looked at each other and said, why didn't we recognize him? Didn't our hearts burn? Here we go. It's the title of the message. When you get with people with like precious faith, and you start fellowshipping, Breaking bad, right? Sharing the word. Does not your heart burn within you? And even, here's a good one. This gives me great hope. And even when we sometimes get out of the way, our hearts will burn within us because of the deposit of God within us that will put us back on the right way. I get it. We can be obstinate and kick against it, but there's the beauty of the Holy Ghost. The deposit of God that's in you, and then the deposit of God that's in us. In the breaking of the bread, it's in the fellowship. That's what the family's all about. And it's one thing that I try to stress extremely. Does it always work out? No. But it doesn't change God's plan about the family. And I'll guarantee you, as you break bread and fellowship in the gathering, does the gathering have to be in here? No, it doesn't have to be in here. But when God's people gather together, your eyes will be enlightened, and Jesus will show up in the midst. And there it is, Brother Bud. All right? 
He unveiled, uh, let's see, stunned they looked at one another and said, why didn't we recognize him? Didn't our hearts burn with the flames of the holy passion while he walked beside us? He unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scripture. They left at once and hurried back to Jerusalem to tell the other disciples. When they found the 11 and the other disciples all together, they overheard them saying, it's really true. The Lord has risen from the dead. He has appeared to Peter. Then the two then." Then the two disciples told the others what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus was unveiled, uh, unveiled himself and he broke bread with them. Yeah. All right, let's see. I think I want that in a different translation. All right, I like the King James. This is what the King James says, verse 20, uh, chapter 24, verse 35. And they told what things were done in the way. What way is that? He is the way, all right? And how he was known of them in the breaking of the bread, all right? Isn't it cool that David wrote this in the psalm? He says, the Lord has done what? He set a banqueting table, right? Where? Before you in the midst of what? I got a lot more. We might do it next week. But this is, this is, and you said this today, Brother Ron. You didn't say it like this, but I'm going to read it like this. Because this was the question that the Lord put to me. Well, I think it was the Lord. I've told you before, I walk very careful, very cautious in saying the Lord told me. That's just me. But I had this sense in the beginning of the week, what am I going to share? Because I always ask the Lord, God, what what am I going to say to the people? What do you want to say to the people? Right? Let it help us. Help us what? Oh, yeah. Press towards the mark of the high calling. Okay, so here is the question. Are we content with the provision of the Lord and his timing? Did you not say something sort of like that today? Are we willing to be at peace with his provision and his timing? Tough question. Tough question. I do know this because I read enough. I've walked long enough. I haven't walked long enough in general, but I've walked long enough to know. He is our provider. God has made a provision. Where I struggle a lot of times, I'm not content with the provision of the Lord, nor am I content with the timing of the provision of the Lord. Sometimes I'm content with the provision, but I don't like the timing. Sometimes I'm not happy with the timing, and I'm not happy with the provision. Mm. The provision of the Lord. Father knows best. It's in the gathering. I'm telling you, our eyes are opened in the gathering. God reveals the thing you look for, right? Remember the old saying, careful what you ask for, because it just might come upon you. Uh, so we always said what? Fear the Lord then, and he'll come upon you. Like that? So with all of that, look around. You be the provision. You be the deposit of God that he's deposited in the earth, right? Right? Don't go get overwhelmed with circumstances. You over, overwhelm and overcome the circumstance. Yes. Amen? Amen? Let the Christ in you, right? It really is. Disclaimer, easier to preach it. You know why that is? Oh, yes. What did you say? Is that mine? That, it's that woman you gave me, Lord. Suke. My mind, my will, and my emotions. All right?
So with all that, I love you. I bless you. Go in peace. Go in the security of the Holy Ghost that dwells within you. Look around. See who's not here.